Welcome to our lecture online. For those who take physics, that equation should look fairly familiar. But now our task is to use the discriminant to place restrictions on the value of h and d in this equation. And so what we're going to do is rewrite the equation in this format where we have it as such. We have 0 is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And of course in this equation the variable is t, so we can say 0 equals at squared plus bt plus c. So we're going to do the same thing here. So we'll write 0 is equal to the second order term first, minus 16t squared plus 32t, that's the first order term, and then plus d minus h. So here we recognize that a is equal to minus 16, b is equal to 32, and c is equal to d minus h. And now we're going to calculate the discriminant, and of course we know what the restrictions are on the discriminant. The discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Again, that comes from the quadratic formula that in this case t is going to be equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So what's inside the radical is the discriminant. And let's figure out what that's equal to. So this is equal to b squared, that would be 32 quantity squared minus 4 times a, which is a minus 16, times c, which is d minus h. All right, so this would be equal to 32 squared, that would be 1,024. 1,024 minus times a minus, that's plus 64 times d minus h. And notice that there's a restriction here. We know that d must be greater than or equal to 0, which means that this must be greater than uh, 0 as well, equal to or greater than 0. So we know that 1024 plus 64 times d minus h should be greater than or equal to 0. All right, let's see here. So we move this across over here. So we have 64 times d minus h is greater than or equal to uh, minus 1024. Dividing both sides by 64, so divide this by 64, divide that by 64, and then moving over here, we can say that d minus h must be greater than or equal to a negative 16. I like this to be a positive number. I think it makes more sense. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So I can say that negative d minus h is less than or equal to a positive 16. So what I've done now is I multiply both sides by a negative number, but then I have to turn the inequality symbol around. And applying this, I can say that h minus d must be less than or equal to 16. And there we go. There's our restriction. We can't separate the two because we have two of these variables, but we can say that h minus d must always be less than or equal to 16 for a valid solution, a valid root or a valid solution to that equation. And that is how it's done. Good morning.